There is more fallout tonight from the leaking of top secret information about how the CIA supposedly monitors electronic devices to spy on people, supposedly just bad people. But the big question, of course, could that include all of us? Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge has the latest tonight. A U.S. government official tells Fox News that the FBI has launched a criminal investigation after WikiLeaks posted more than 8,000 documents allegedly from the CIA cyber unit. While the White House would neither confirm nor deny authenticity, spokesman Sean Spicer said there appears to be a double standard. The interest and the outrage that occurred last year by a lot of Democrats when it came to leaks is interesting that we're hearing not as much outrage now when it comes to some of our issues of national security. Among the revelations that Apple's iPhone was the target of so-called zero-day programs that exploit previously unknown weaknesses, allowing the CIA to capture audio and video recordings as well as extract user data and contacts. Apple said in a statement, quote, while our initial analysis indicates that many of the issues leaked today were already patched in the latest iOS, we will continue work to rapidly address any identified vulnerabilities. Former intelligence officials and cybersecurity experts said the preliminary evidence points to an insider and the likelihood government contractors were involved with the support of a third party. I can say that uh, the ability to do this can be attributed to maybe four or five bad actors. Uh, Russia, China, uh, perhaps a, a large organized criminal group, but this is a sophisticated actor. Emphasizing cyber spying tools are not turned on U.S. citizens, former director Michael Hayden defended the CIA on late night television. I can tell you that these tools would not be used against an American. We just, why we just, not? Why wouldn't they be used against an American? Americans are the ones who buy the Samsung TVs. Um, there are some bad people in the world who have Samsung TVs too. Right. And, and so NSA develops tools, CIA develops tools that we can use. Now those secrets have apparently been spilled by WikiLeaks, the same group that posted former NSA contractor Edward Snowden's stolen records that exposed government surveillance. Russia recently extended Snowden's asylum. Two of the most important um, eyes of the intelligence community have been uh, degraded, and it means that we have to refocus and continue to rebuild and be able to understand what our adversaries are trying to hide from us. A former intelligence official said some leaked documents are from last fall and not beyond, indicating the breach had stopped. Fox News has learned tonight that a CIA memo directs employees not to discuss the leaks or view the documents online. Brett. Thank you, Catherine. And now on WikiLeaks, releasing new documents that claim to reveal the CIA's most sensitive spying secrets, at least the electronic ones. Thousands of pages supposedly detailing how the CIA can turn ordinary cell phones and smart TVs into surveillance devices. Morgan Wright is a cybersecurity analyst and a senior fellow for the Center at the Center for Digital Government. Morgan, it's good to have you back on. Hi, when, John. When you got wind of these revelations from, from WikiLeaks, what's, what was your first reaction? Uh, a word that would be bleeped out if I said it right now, mm -hmm. and it was like, here we go again. I mean, it's just, what do we have to do to protect these secrets? Some people may disagree. They say, you shouldn't be tapping these phones. You shouldn't be doing this. But at the end of the day, these are our secrets that we use to protect us from attacks, to collect intelligence on foreign adversaries. Would anybody, would, how many people would like to know exactly what Kim Jong-un is going to do with his nuclear missiles? What if we disclosed the only trade craft we had that allowed us to see what was going on? What good would be served by that? So look, there are a lot of implications for this, and none of them are good. Well, Julian Assange, the guy who found at WikiLeaks thinks there shouldn't be any secrets, that everything ought to be open to everybody. Your thoughts? Well, what, Julian, give me your password and let's see what's on the WikiLeaks server. I mean, he even wants to keep certain things secret, so that's a little disingenuous to say that he wants everything to be transparent when he's hiding out in the Ecuadorian embassy. But that being said, we're talking about things that, these, they, John, this is more than just collecting information. The CIA works differently than the NSA. They operate agents in countries. Their uh, case officers recruit people to do close-in operations, which means I give you something. They're taking USBs or other things and implanting them into networks. When this gets to disclosed, it means we put at risk the very people we're asking to spy on their country or their organizations to get us this information. It puts them at risk the same way when Robert Hansen was arrested, he disclosed the identities of our agents when Alder James was arrested. This is no different than that. The only difference is this has a little bit of electronic to it, but at the end of the day, John, it's the same thing. I think it's treasonous and traitorous activity, and I hope the investigation finds out who did this. For instance, uh, there are some apps. Uh, WhatsApp, for instance, is a, is a messaging right. application that a lot of people use. 
use that has some encryption ability. Uh, apparently, these files suggest that you can, or the CIA was able to get around that encryption and tap into some of these WhatsApp uh, conversations that people who were right. using the app thought were, were safe. Well, technically, John, the conversations were safe. In other words, they never broke the encryption. And actually, one of the most popular ones that they're going after is Telegram, because that's used by a lot of the jihadist networks. What they did was compromise the device that the app was running on so they could see what was being typed in and the messaging going across. It's still very difficult to break the encryption itself. So what they did is they targeted the particular type of advice, whether it was an Android or an iPhone. And I mean, that's... It's brilliant work. I mean, they, they figured out a way around it, but at the end of the day, now that people know it, they'll take countermeasures, and it'll right. be much more difficult for us to monitor. And Apple says, for one, that it's going to try to, you know, patch some of the holes uh, that right. this, this uh, dump has revealed in, in its software. John, there will always be this contention between the government and our national security and the private sector, for example, Silicon Valley. They may not want the government in it, but at the end of the day, if the bad guys are driving a certain brand of car, then I want to know how to defeat that car and get into it, or a lock, or a safe. It, mm. A phone, a computer, is no different than what we've been doing for years in terms of breaking into safes and trying to find and copy other people's secrets. But the fact that this is so pervasive is that it's run on software, a lot of people don't understand it, so they fear what they don't understand. But this is no different than what we've been doing for years. It's just a different uh, uh, t tool. It's not a new tactic. But, John, the more that we disclose this, the more it levels the paying, playing field. We're the good guys. We always fight with one hand behind our yeah. back, so we're always at a disadvantage. If we level the playing field, we give our adversaries an advantage we don't want them to have in this cyber battlefield. Agreed. Mark Morgan Wright, a cybersecurity analyst. Morgan, thanks for your expertise. Welcome back to Hannity. So this week, WikiLeaks released a new batch of documents allegedly containing information about tactics the CIA uses as part of its surveillance program. Joining us now with reaction, former intelligence official of the U.S. National Security Agency, William Binney, and former senior intelligence officer, Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer. Hey, Mr. Binney, let me start with you. One of the things that I, I have a headline here in front of me, WikiLeaks, CIA uses stolen malware to attribute cyber attacks to nations like Russia. And what they're really implying here is that they would deliberately mimic the hacking protocols of Russia to obfuscate their own works. Do you believe that's true? Uh, yeah, sure. I think that that's true as well as uh, I think that a lot of this software that they've gotten to do the penetrations came from NSA, uh, GCHQ, and the other five eyes plus other cooperating countries. And uh, of course they gained additional information once they penetrated into people is, like the Russians and the Ukrainians. Is it legal and, for them to do that at the CIA? Uh, actually, it's not their charter, but uh, they, certainly, uh, they certainly are doing it and have been doing it for many decades. It's nothing new for them. I mean, they have been uh, using uh, sig signals intelligence for quite some time. In other words, and we well, do know what happened in the case of General Flynn. That was a felony, a violation of the Espionage Act, uh, <clears throat> even though he did have, in his case, a, a security clearance. Maybe they could have listened, but it was certainly illegal to release that. Uh, Colonel Schaefer, what is yeah. your take on all of this? And when the intelligence community, and I'm sure it's just a few people, I have great faith in our intelligence services, and what they do is really dangerous and important. Precisely. But if they're leaking information on Americans and using techniques that could possibly spy through our TVs and not allow full encryption of our phones, that's somewhat troubling to me. Well, part of the deal is all, all those vulnerabilities, Sean, you just mentioned, the bad guys have too. And this has always been one of the, my concerns. I've done this sort of thing for a living about, about the time William was doing it. Uh, my, my concern when I was on the inside is uh, this ha these people, our intelligence agencies, have huge uh, technology and huge power. So that power must be used ethically and focused on the adversary only. What you've seen here, as you've pointed out, Sean, it was used against one of our own. Lieutenant General Mike Flynn is a friend of mine. So I, I, I first, on a personal level, I think it's horrendous. Uh, on, on a it's illegal. Uh, legal level, it's, it's, it needs to be prosecuted. Yeah. So I think we have to understand it's <laughs> good that we understand these things. It's good we have people who understand the tools. But how you use those tools ethically, legally, and morally is hugely important. Colonel, if the CIA, in fact, WikiLeaks now, they have a track record. They've not been wrong in all the years of existence. Right. They've not been proven wrong one time. And I'm looking at these documents. I guess the most frightening thing, if you're in the government, is they let release less than 1% of the information they say they have. Right. And they're talking about 
more powerful surveillance techniques than even the NSA without checks and balances. Correct. The, the fact that they build a cyber attack arsenal, that $100 billion came from the Obama years, and that it implies that every single electronic device they are capable of hacking and spying through, and even turning TVs into listening devices. Do you believe that? Do you think the CIA has that capability? And if they do, if there's no check and balance, doesn't that mean we're all potentially subject to living in a police state where the government at will can spy on whoever they want, bribe, mm -hmm. blackmail, do whatever they want with that? That's scary. That is a danger of having this. And unfortunately, Sean, this is one of those few times I cannot comment on what you're asking me. I, 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 you know, I used to do this for a living. I will say this. I think some of those things are even more powerful than, than you know, than you listed. And that's why ethically, legally, and as William said, you have to be very specific about how you use Title 18 as law enforcement, Title 10 as military, EO 1233, Title 50 as intelligence, which has U.S. person restrictions. President Obama, I have a feeling, didn't care. He just told people to go out and do things. And this is where more you have to have someone who was at the top willing to do the hard things of saying it is my job to restrict people from using well, those things. We, we don't have constitutional don't protections. Have, precisely. And this is where we were going. And let me say this, and, and I don't know if Bill will agree with me or not. ATP 2829, the so-called Russian uh, tool that we used to hack the DNC, Sean, we did it. Not me, but our, our guys, former members of NSA, retired intelligence officers, used these tools to break in there and get the information and, out. And, That's and what the Democrats don't want to talk about because it doesn't fit their narrative. You know that for a fact. You know the Democrats did it, or the, that former operatives did it, using the malware techniques that they put the Russians' fingerprints on Sean, it and make it appear like the yes. Russians. In other words, you're telling me this whole Russian story that the media has been running with for months and months and months, that it was our people that did it, and they it just put the fingerprints of the Russians on it? That's, pro that's right. The, the, the whole you idea. Have proof I, of I, that? I don't have proof of it, but I'm telling you this is what I've heard. And what I'm trying to tell you is that if you go back and actually talk to people a a inside, the, the evidence is not that the Russians did it. The evidence is a Russian tool was used. What I'm saying is concerned Americans who were fed up with the Clintons doing things, I think, were the ones who actually got in there and broke the information out and gave it to WikiLeaks. I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I've mentioned this to other reporters, by the way. And they don't seem to be interested in going and checking this out because it doesn't shine. Talk to John narrative. Solomon and Sarah Carter. They want to hear this. Well, uh, this last this, question, this Mr. Binney. Yes. You had told me that you say that every phone call, every text, every um, email of every American is gathered into metadata right now by our government. Every single call, text, email. Is that true? You know that? Well, it's not just the metadata, it's the content also. Yeah. And, and, and our it, government and is storing every conversation. And that's why I, 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 that's why I wrote that up in a sworn affidavit in support of Jewel versus NSA challenging the constitutionality of NSA collecting all this data. And you say Executive Order 12333 allows that? Yeah. Section 23C. And that is the same one that Obama altered so 16 other agencies could now share in that information right. of signals. Yep. Of, of that is, wow. If I could point out a greater danger here, Sean, uh, the point is they know about all these weaknesses in firewalls, operating systems, uh, switches, servers, and so on, and how to break into them, and they aren't fixing them. That means that everybody in the, in the world, including all of us here in the U.S., are still sitting there all vulnerable to attacks. Right. And, they are, and, so and they're doing so it as, as, you're saying they're doing it as a matter of course, and that's why you yes, left after 32 exactly. years and, at the NSA. And, and the point is that they come back to us after an attack and say, well, we, have to, we need more money for cybersecurity, when in fact they don't fix the problems they already know. All right. And I so they're not giving us cybersecurity. You know? Scary. So right. This is worse than any spy novel I can think of. Thank you all for they're being with us. They're swindling us. Yeah. Thank you, Sean.